Hey guys, it's Barbara Nelson with SuccessfullySolo.com and I have found something I can't wait to share. It's a new piece of software. It's called Trello. You can see it up here, Trello.com. That's where you go get it for free. Wahoo. And the reason I'm in love with it is that I finally found a way to get unstuck about my own personal annual planning process. And this software was what did it for me. And I'm really excited because, you know, I try, I'm a very visual person. I honestly do a lot of things on paper with post-its, but um, as a means of, of working myself through an annual planning process, Trello is turning out to be a really big boon. I know that a lot of you are also working on annual planning and I wanted to share it with you right now so that you don't waste any time and show it, uh, show enough of it to you that you can decide if you want to use it or not um, based on this uh, little piece I'm doing here. My little first uh, Camtasia production, by the way, but I'm I, again, I'm so excited I need to share. So this is Trello. Trello's, um, you know, first organizational element is, is around boards. And this is your welcome board. And on the board, you have lists. You have a list called basics here, intermediate here, and advanced here. You can add lists and it would come up as another vertical. So think of this as your whiteboard. And then under these lists for organizing, you have cards and this is a card. Wahoo! And you can actually give more detail to a card. You can put a checklist on the back of it, for example. That's what I'm doing so far. And you can add due dates, you can make them colors. Uh, if you go back here, you can see that you can attach pictures and files, any kind of hyperlink, etc. So you've got boards, lists, and cards. And how does this, um, oh, hey, did I give you the caveat? I didn't. I am not a techie, not even like in the least. Don't pretend to be, don't want to be. Uh, so this is very easy and you're going to really learn how to use the software by going to the software and using the tools that they've given you. But again, I'm just going to show you how I'm using it with annual planning. So with that, let's go to my boards. I have a couple boards. I'm starting to play around with this for use with my mastermind groups because we've been struggling with technology and finding one that's really easy and effective. I'm not sure yet if this is it, but I'm going to give it a go. So I'm working on that. But here's my personal 2012 planning board. So uh, I started out with this one list called End of Your Goals. And well, I named it End of Your Goals. Let's put it there. I started a list called End of Your Goals. And then I really love, and I've posted about this, so you probably have heard it before. I love Chris Brogan's three word um, idea for expressing sort of your intentions for the year. You can find that post by Googling Chris Brogan three words and I think you'll like it and you might even want to steal some of his words. I didn't but I'm still considering it. Um, so these are the three big words that are going to remind me on an ongoing basis of what my focus is this year. And um, so the first thing I did was come up with those three words and then for each of those words I wrote myself a little description that I can come back to. So my minimize goal is about focus and elimination. So um, getting rid of extra stuff. I'm one of those people that tends to find something new and get excited about it and want to share when really what my clients want is for me to give them something effective to use and then um, back off. So <laughs> I suppose this isn't a good example today. But um, again, so that's sort of my reminder to myself about why I chose Minimize. And then I've added a checklist so that I will have, it made me think through more of what Minimize means to me. So what are the areas that I want to minimize and how is that going to show up for me when I'm sitting at the end of the year thinking about this goal? So these are some of the things I want around this goal. Um, you know, read, use, and value every newsletter, blog post, etc. that comes into my mailbox. Um, choosing best of breed and then screening out the rest of uh, the resources that I have found so interesting but really want to minimize. Um, all of my clients have goals and are moving towards them consistently. I do not continue to work with people who don't act. So big one for me around minimizing, minimizing where I spend my energy so that I can make the most uh, 
impact, get the most results from people that are a good fit for me. So I thought through Minimize, I made up these checklists and it, it caused me to go through this process of thinking about year end for my three words. And you know, there's one thing that's missing. I'm going to add it now, just to show you how easy it is to add. And it's some element that's going to be uh, around time and money. And that means that, you know, I'm going to come down to, I need to come up with some additional goals, some very specific goals around the hours that I work. And even more importantly, the hours that I don't work and the income that I want to make to uh, be able to live the way that I want to live in 2012. So I will create some other goals around time and money. And there's my placeholder. After I did the end of year goals list, I actually created empty lists for the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, which is out there. And then I got a little bit stuck. So originally I thought I was going to take, you know, this, move it out quarter, 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 and uh, see where I was. But what I found was that I'm pretty clear on what I need to do uh, by the end of the first quarter on these goals. And so I decided to bag, you know, that notion of going from year to quarter, quarter, quarter to to a month, et cetera. And I just really fleshed out where I need to be at the end of the first quarter with regard to my 2012 goals. And that was the next thing I did. These don't have checklists. They really are just results. There are things that I need to deal with and resolve by the end of the first quarter. Um, you know, website and brand revision is complete. Social media presence is aligned, updated, and scheduled. So, um, all that means is that up to me, that's what that's going to translate into is going to be um, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And I'll either have a business page or I won't have a business page on Facebook. I'll have an editorial calendar. I'll decide if I'm going to actually really actively be on Twitter or if I'm just going to get out of it. Right now I'm confused and I know that I want to resolve that and I want to do it by the end of the first quarter. So that's that goal. So there's a little um, example. Obviously, you know, I've set different kinds of goals. There's going to be a goal that happens every quarter around new habits in place. And I'm just going to create the habits that I want to keep and like blocking time daily, actually, or weekly planning, really doing it consistently. And then I'm going to track those quarter to quarter. So that's, um, that's sort of what I did. I went from end of year, discarded the idea of going quarterly in detail through the year and just stopped with, okay, where do I need to be at the end of the first quarter? Because it's January and I have a lot to do. Then I added the month of January. And um, let me show you how I did that. And let's go ahead and add February in. So I go to this add list over here. Just type in February 2012. I add the list to the board. And now, since I've got so many lists going, I need to come all the way over here and pick up this February and move it um, over to its rightful place next to January um, as I start building to these 1Q goals. So obviously, I'm going to add March. But right now, where I am in my process um, that I had, <laughs> I had to stop and tell you about it because it's so much fun is just really fleshing out got my quarter. Now I'm starting to flesh out January. And the first thing I did was around a Get Clients Now program. So one of the uh, ways that I actually make an impact is a program that I love called Get Clients Now. And by the end of the first quarter, I want to have one cycle completed with at least five enrolled and committed participants. So I want to make sure that at least five people get a good cycle of um, Get Clients Now in during the first quarter so that they can get maximum results throughout the year using it. So, okay, so Get Clients Now program, what do I really have to do for that? And in fact, there's actually a lot of things. I need to choose the dates and the time. I need to update the blog post where I keep those dates and time published. I need to figure out a new sign up process because I am getting rid of my shopping cart. That was another goal for the end of the first quarter. I need to, um, you know, add the announcement to my signature line, um, look at using Trello for the scorecard. <laughs> anyway, you get the picture. Uh, see, I had to give you that detail because I'm excited about it. I'm thinking about it, but you don't really need that, do you? Okay, so you can see that um, pretty cool linkage and very easy to do, you know, easy to add cards, 
easy to flip the card around and add checklists or due dates, etc. Want to also discuss, yeah, this notion of members. Okay, this is my private board, obviously, 2012 planning. Um, and I'm the only member of this board. But when I go to thinking about using this for a mastermind group or for the Get Clients Now scorecard, you know, my clients would be, or the members of, yeah, my clients really, members of mastermind group or clients too, um, would have their pictures here. And then for example, you could put a picture on a task so that if everybody were doing it, you could have everyone's picture there. Or, you know, if it's one person's, you could just assign them to the task, which is what I just did by moving that icon was a little shortcut for that. So you can see that if you're working on projects of any kind, this could be very helpful. Again, you can assign these cards um, to people. You can give them due dates. You can attach checklists. You can upload, you know, material that might be part of that activity, etc. So very cool. Just, um, you know, I think that's going to do it for us. Wanted to share it with you again. It's January, folks. It's in a heartbeat. It's going to be the 15th. And I want for you to have the most fabulous 2012 ever. And um, to do that, one of the things you need to know is what's, you know, what do you call a fab fabulous year? And how do you say it for that matter? But anyway, what do you call a fabulous year? What does that mean? What are your goals for the year? And then you really do need to think out, okay, what does that mean I need to be doing now? And what does that mean, um, you know, rolling out through the year, what's that going to mean later on? And how can I tell by going back to these if I'm on track or I need to change my priorities or do more, um, et cetera. I will say that for me, I'm going to continue to flesh out January, obviously, and that's my task for today. Um, I don't think I'm going to have, I probably am going to have the full first quarter planned. I don't think I'm going to have it done before the first of, you know, I mean, I'll have my February goals done before February starts and that's about where I am with that. And then mid February, I'm going to reevaluate, go back to my end of the year goals, check in with, did I really, you know, am I on track to meet these one Q goals? And what does that mean I need to do in two Q? and then I'll blow those months out. So I'm thinking that this year I'm on a very rolling planning schedule and it happens to be, um, you know, rolling quarters, even rolling month to month a bit in between quarters. So that's how annual planning is gonna work for me. I am gonna use these checklists. You know, I can go ahead and check these off. If I want to break um, a month into weeks, I can. If I want to give, um, give it due dates, I can. Uh, so lots of flexibility and I love this tool. I'm very excited. Wanted to share it with you. My email is barbara at successfullysolo.com. Let me know if you use this for annual planning and how it works for you. Um, always looking for ideas. On the other hand, if you have something that works for you well or you're not excited by this, don't do it. Don't waste your time. If post-its on a whiteboard work great for you, or if working in your calendar software works great for you, or if you're using um, another project planning, you know, software that works well for you, whatever works. This is just something that I'm excited about and uh, it's pretty easy to share now. So I thought I would. And that's it. Have a fabulous year.